Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Hold Up, a movie podcast. The show where we take two movies from the previous century and one from the current century and we ask, do they hold up? Do they measure up? It's a That's good true. question. And we're finding some surprise answers and sometimes contentious answers on this show. Um, you know, anything can happen. Um, with me, well, I should say who I am first before I say who I'm with. I'm with Stupid, or you're with Stupid, right? Yeah. Um, I am your host, Davin. And with me always is World Mind. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. How's it going? Not too uh, bad. You know, last month we talked about environmentalism. We talked about the things that humans do to damage the earth. And, you know, to try to lighten the mood after that, a couple of weeks ago we talked about peace on earth and mm -hmm. you know goodwill towards men you know and women except in the apartment mostly just men in that one um <laughs> uh, well we go from an apartment to an animal house if you will <laughs> oh my okay we yeah i don't know i don't think there's going to be a lot of disagreement but to, to, tonight um our theme will be parties so in, in kind of getting the New Year festivities, you know? Yes, exactly. In the honor of the New Year and Christmas parties, holidays parties, meeting up with friends and family, having perhaps a, a cocktail or a, a a whiskey or two. Just water for me tonight, sir. Well, you know, you got to stay hydrated. It's important when you're partying hard. True. So, here we are. We have three movies ahead of us. We have... Animal House from 1978. We have House Party from 1990. And Shit House from 2020. Um, uh, the the House Connection sort of started as an accident, but I picked Animal House and then House Party, so why not make it three House Party movies? We'll get yep. real, yep. real specific with it. Get, uh, um, get three little piggies with it, if you will. Yeah. So should we just get right? I think this might end up being our shortest episode ever because I don't know how much we can really talk about these movies, but we'll see. To be we fair, I'll, 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 uh, I've got a fair amount of screenshots. I don't know how many of them we'll use, but I figured out if, if when you go through your explanations, I might pop a few up on screen and I'd be like, oh, yeah. But um, yeah, I just wanted to come prepared. I'd rather come prepared than unprepared, you know? Um, also, I, I gotta say on the movie Morsels tonight, it's pretty heavy on the first half and extremely light on the last half, so it's just, uh, yeah, I don't expect a long episode. We've said that before, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we, we set our record for length in the last one, talking about Christmas <sighs> episodes, so really anything can happen on this show. <laughs> so in Theater One... We have Animal House, 1978, starring John Belushi, Tim Matheson, Kevin Bacon, and Nova Scotia's own Donald Sutherland, directed by John Landis, who we've seen on this show before. He was the director of An American Werewolf in London. So, uh, yeah, we've had uh, directors make several appearances on this show already in six episodes, so. Yeah, yeah, there's, and, there's and you know what? We we've also talked about Kevin Bacon more than once on this show too. He was in the Have Guardians we? of the Galaxy special. We didn't talk about that on this show. No, we didn't. No, you. That's right. I guess this this was production and federation of podcasts. It's been mentioned on the Mary Mabel Martyrs Mary Mater Marvel <laughs> Society. <laughs> Mary Mater Marvel Society. Yes, that's that's the that's the name. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about that last night. That was a fun show. That one ran a good three hours, too, almost, I think. So, you know, but, you know, that was the year-end review special. We had a lot to talk about. There were nine entries into the MCU. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about Animal House. You have a trailer for us, Murphy? I do have a trailer for us. Good old-fashioned, lengthy, almost-tells-it-all trailer, as the old ones do. So let's get into it.
This is Faber College in 1962. You know, 1962 had to be the best year of my life. I was a member of Delta Tau Chi. <laughs> The Deltas. What a great bunch of guys. Pluto. Hoover. Uh, raise your right hand. Pinto. Flounder. Flounder. D Day. Boone. It's not gonna be an orgy. It's a toga party. And look at me in 62, the otter. School was fun in those days. The girl, the party. The friendship. The girls. Of course, we had our problems. Find me a way to revoke Delta's charter. Finished at Faber, expelled. I want you off this campus at 9 o'clock Monday morning. Let's go! Tim Matheson. Would you go out with me? And Donald Sutherland as Jennings. Now, was Milton saying being bad is more fun than being good? National Lampoon's Animal House. So much in that trailer. It's literally I mean, like the last I mean, half. My favorite part, actually, probably. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. So I'll get into the plot and the storytelling here. Um, so if this is not supposedly in 1962 where this is taking place. And we have Larry and Kent, who later will be called uh, what, Otter and Flounder? Uh, uh, Boone and. No, yeah, Boone, Boone, is, Lander. 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 Boone, Boone, oh, Boone oh. is um the other main character that ends up. He's the guy. He's uh, yeah. the character that dates Kate Allen's character. Yeah, and they're new students at Faber College, and they're looking to join a frat. Uh, and they fail trying to get into Omega. So uh, Larry and Kent head over to Delta because uh, Kent, I think it is, who can get them in. Yeah, Captain yeah, Flander, Flanders. Yeah, yeah, Flanders the one who's got legacy, family lineage, if you will. But then you know they also heard that it's the worst one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's that's proven to be the case for sure. No, no, Otter's a different guy. I forget his name actually. That guy. Anyway, the characters aren't too memorable in this, so that's not important. <laughs> There's a couple memorable characters. So I, I will say this. I've seen this movie more than once, so it can't be all bad. This uh, is actually my first time watching it, to be honest. I, uh, I've always kind of, you know, been like, oh, this is this is the one to Pinto. watch. I'm like, okay. That's it. Yeah, Pinto. Pinto and Flounder. That's right. So Pinto and Flounder get in, they say. And, and Delta House is having a lot of trouble with Dean Warmer. Played by Canadian actor uh, 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 John Vernon, who he was in a lot of things in my childhood. Like he was the villain. He's always the villain. He's kind of got those intense eyes and it's kind of very serious face and a good crazy voice. Like he was the voice of the Incredible Hulk in the 90s series. I'm pretty sure. Um, he was also he the was voice of Falcone and Batman. Or at oh, least like wow. a Batman movie episode. Mm. Something like that. Oh, he's got a great voice, and he was also in uh, 
Ernest Goes to the Camp, which was where I first knew him from. And I love that movie. He was oh, yeah. not a nice guy in that either. So uh, he's a, he's always a good villain. So there's nothing wrong with him in this in this movie. Um, so he's getting sick of it, and he's trying to figure out a way to get rid of them. So he puts them on double secret probation, so that you know one more strike and he can get rid of the deltas. So he wants them out of there. And Boone and Katie, his girlfriend, they're facing some problems because she wants them to be more serious and stop partying with these Delta boys. And then uh, there's a big, big thing where Bluto and D Day, who uh, that's John Belushi and D Day. I don't know the actor that plays D Day. Bruce McGill. I was, I was actually, I oh. didn't realize Bruce McGill was in this movie until I was like, oh yeah, oh, he's just so young. He plays the cool yeah. guy. Yeah, he's so young and handsome. And I'm just He's like, <laughs> wow, Bruce McGill looks so badass. I loved him. He was probably my favorite character in this movie, honestly. This is it's not a bad movie. Um, it has some issues, uh, which we'll talk about. Yeah. So the, their plan is they're going to steal the answers to the psychology midterm. But they get they end up stealing the wrong answers because Omega like set a trap for them and get in head and head yeah, steal the they, wrong they answers set some dummy papers in a, in a bin so basically all their grades get really bad so warmer's like aha i can probably get rid of these guys now and gives them like one final warning it's just like if they don't clean up their act now they're really in trouble um but they threw a wild toga party anyway <laughs> and uh warmer's wife who um, Otter meets at the supermarket it ends up uh, shacking up with Otter which is funny so he's been how he's yeah see now he's banging the Dean's wife <laughs> <laughs> the Dean's like, really like joke. <laughs> it's pretty funny how much of a nemesis this fraternity is to Dean see I, I kind of like things about this movie I just find a lot of the, the, the humor doesn't hold up very well but I'm, I'm jumping oh. ahead yeah. Um, and Pinto, he's making out with the mayor's daughter, and then the mayor ends up Boy. calling the dean about it, and he's just like, "This is all your fault." And he's just like, "How is it my fault?" Like, uh, that was pretty funny. Oh God, <laughs> yeah. There's some funny oh, things. God. It's just like the attempts at humor, like the actual like jokes and bits are just like uh, not that great. A bit juvenile. Bit, yeah, you know, just frat boyish kind of stuff. It's aged. It's aged humor. So then the fellows they all go out and try to find some dates, and, and they go to a bar where Otis Day is playing. See, there's there's some good music in this because that soul band plays a couple tunes, and so that's pretty good. And there's some a couple of good oldies in the background too it's the music's not nearly as good as in the next film we're going to talk about but the music's pretty good in this. Uh, so they go to the like they, they go to like yeah so it's like it's basically a black bar and they're like the only white people there so they get kind of nervous and then these guys come up to like the table and they're just like can we dance with your dates and it's like oh absolutely and then they just like immediately go running out of there, like like their life depended on it, and <laughs> and crash into three cars, getting out of the parking lot. That seemed a bit crazy and overkill but, uh, reaction on their part. I think they were just more interested in their dates. Yeah. So uh, that broke down, but yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, they end up luring. Otter into a, like a hotel and beating him up, and then uh, Warmer expels Delta, and, and then they want to get the revenge. <laughs> yeah, and so they they put an old car into the parade float because it's like a, the homecoming parade. And that uh, they kind of actually just trash the whole parade, really. Yeah, they basically just trash it, and then there's like a few. So that's basically the plot. The plots of these uh, party movies aren't going to take a long time to go through. So, so, so that's pretty much it. So, Murphy, how did you feel about the plot and storytelling in this 
Uh, I mean, I would like to know exactly, I guess, if there was a solid plot or storytelling to this. Because, I mean, it, there was there was paper thin to the best set up. Like, yes, these guys were going to get Delta, but they essentially get set up in the Delta party. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're all just, they're all anarchists at heart. And they're just like, well, we're going out. We're going out with a smile. Hey, Sam. Uh, and they're just having outlandish parties and getting themselves into further trouble. And some of the things that they do throughout this movie, I kind of had an issue with, like, uh, particularly, like... The jokes are very misogynistic yeah, and not funny. Yeah, yeah. That the, the, the whole Blutowski, like, climbing the ladder and peeping on the girls and, like, loudly clamoring along the rails and, like, these girls just don't seem to notice it. Like, of course, this is a National Lampoon's movie, but, like... Which I find, honestly, you know, National Lampoon's movies barely, rarely hold up for me. Yeah. I mean, out of all the national, like I, I've Not always been, I've grown up watching them, and I've always been a fan of them. I love, uh, you know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, National Lampoon's School Trip. Um, you know, I, I do generally like National Lampoon movies, but this one wasn't holding up, and I think it's just because it's, it's very of our parents' age, you know. Um. Like he does something even was, worse. Like that's one thing John Belushi's character does. But later on, at the end there, during the parade, he ends up like basically kidnapping this girl. He just yeah. throws her screaming into his car and like smiles at the camera kind of and drives away. It's like, what just happened? Did he just yeah, And he drives her? away and it's like he becomes a senator and she marries him apparently. Like that's yeah, like that 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 the that's the one thing I do kind of enjoy is at the end of the movie they had these sort of like end bits, you know. Up there. Daniel Simpson Day sixty three whereabouts unknown. Uh, Barbara Sue Jansen sixty three tour guide Universal Studios Hollywood. Apparently, if you went to Universal Studios and said, yeah. uh, "I'm asking for Barb" or something like that, they would give you a, uh-huh. a, 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 a like a free discount or a free ticket. Boone and Katie married. Okay, this scene bugged me. All right, just before I continue on, just because this makes sense. Mm-hmm. This th- here's why this scene bugged me. Tell me something odd about. So they just they just. She saves him from the cops and he stops and he looks at her and I I feel like they just cut out a scene where they were going to have like a reconciling talk because earlier in the film, uh, he catches her cheating with Donald Sutherland, you know, and they don't really talk about that at any point after that moment. He just kind of goes on his like chaos spree and then they cut Belushi's yelling crazy, and now they're making out all of a sudden. It's like, it was such a weird cut. It stood out so wrong to me. I, I don't know why they chose to do that. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know. It was weird. But yeah, they got care, you know, Kent Dorfman, sensitivity trainer in Canada Groups of, of Cleveland Incorporated. Uh, Eric Stratton, gynecologist. I don't think this guy should be a gynecologist. But uh, Eric Stratton... <laughs> Damn glad to meet you. Probably one of my favorite lines. Lawrence Kroger, editor of National Lampoon magazine. Don't know how he's not on a watch list. Greg <laughs> uh, Lee Marmalade, 63, Nixon White House aide, raped in prison in 74. Don't know why they needed to put that in there. Oh my God. Douglas Niedermeyer, 63, killed in Vietnam by his own troops. That one I laughed at. Also, yeah. this, the scene where he like pulls out like an Enfield loads it aims it at this man shoots with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten people behind him hits the glass bottle which one two three people are directly behind that glass bottle those people are dead he murdered it was very ridiculous niedermeyer killed innocent people that day and nobody's talking about it 
And John Belushi kidnapped a woman, and no one's talking about that. <laughs> 62 was a wild time. Also, I noticed it this was a uh, wild little, time. little t- uh, tidbit in the chaos, you know, between Kevin Bacon freaking, sh- freaking out. Oh, uh, yes, the, uh, the young Kevin Bacon. Such a baby face. Apparently, it's his first role. Um, there's a scene where Flounder goes to get a bunch of marbles, and he throws the marbles onto the street to trip up the ROTC guys. And if you look carefully, they're gumballs. Yeah, they sure are. <laughs> but then that other shot, they weren't. They were marbles in that shot. No, yeah, it starts with marbles, and then it, it like, yeah. the next shot is them falling on gumballs. Gumballs are cheaper. I mean, cheaper and probably <laughs> easier on the back. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, like there was there was a bunch of like fun little scenes in 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 throughout this film. Uh, like just like the Belushi intro alone, I thought was pretty good. Um, I don't know, Larry. I don't think you're trying very hard. I hate this. Look, no sweat. My brother Fred was a Delta. That makes me a legacy. They gotta take me. It's like their law. Don't worry. I'll put in a good word for you. Great. I heard Delta's the worst house on campus. <laughs> Pissing on Excuse their me, shoes. Sir, is this the Delta house? Sure. Come on in. For the most part, though, this movie wastes John, but the talents of John Belushi. Well, the thing they, the reason why they wasted the talents, of, they didn't really waste the talents of John Belushi. It's just they, they didn't. He was really giving it his all because he thought it could sort of like revive his career. It was during the point in his time when he was like going sober. He was a hard sober trying to stay sober during the filming of this movie, which is like, wow, <laughs> that must've been very hard for him. Um, and uh, because he was staying sober throughout the filming, he was also doing Saturday Night Live. So he was flying between New York and uh, Oregon to film the movie, and they were also keeping him. So he, he wasn't as available uh, throughout the, the filming of this film, so they could only use him to a spare amount. Um, and the amounts they use him are is pretty much slapstick buffoonery sort of um, grossness, if you will. Um, but one of my favorite scenes, I think, was uh, was this one. Uh... Thank you, God. <laughs> that scene made me laugh so hard. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> my favorite scene was in the trailer, actually, which was. Donald Sutherland and just doing teaching his class, and he oh, thinks really? he said something very profound, but what's going to be also very interesting to the students because he's just like, Is uh, Milton telling us that it's better or more fun to be bad? And he's like, mm. hmm. and Like, no one's paying attention, he's just like. And then uh, he's, I he's like, I need some papers from some of you. And they like walk out of the class. He's just like, this is my job. Like, pay attention to me. Yeah. Uh, my I other favorite better. scene, I, I would have to say, is the introduction to D-Day and Eric Stratton consecutively. Which... Hi, my name is uh, Kent Dorfman. Cracks of beer. Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman. Damn glad to meet you. <laughs> D-Day. Hi, Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman. Damn glad to meet you. Damn glad to meet you. Hi, that was Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman. He was damn glad to meet you. Oh, Larry, good. I see you've met D-Day. Good, you're having a nice time. It's good, good. Eric Stratton, Rush Chairman. Damn glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. Hi. Is that... Damn glad to meet you. I'm going to start saying that to people. Chris Murphy, damn glad to meet you. <laughs> damn glad to meet you. 
<laughs> yeah, I like it. That wasn't bad. This movie is not bad. It's it's not bad. It's just it's like, not bad, it's but not it's great. it's aged to a great. It's it's not it, great, it, it, you know. Um, I can see how it would have been quite good in its day. Yeah, yeah, like. Um, well, let's yeah, there's, there's move on to performance. That really got me funny. Um, for, for the performances I like, they like say Belushi was kind of wasted, but he was good at what he did. Like when he walks down the stairs and smashes Buddy's guitar because he's just singing, "I'll bring my love a flower," and he's just like he can't handle it. And he just smashes Buddy's guitar up and hands it back to him. Just like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, good yeah, I got I got mm-hmm. some some tasty morsels about that guitar smashing thing. I think honestly, for me, it's Did you get uh, a splinter. Did you get some splinters? Oh, you, 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 you it's kind of. No, I think for for me, um, the 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 one that really stood out the most was Mark Metcalf as Doug Niederbiter. Um, mm. he was just so kind of iconic in like how angry he was. Um, that and you know, um, Kate Allen, you know, her 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 performance was pretty pretty solid like she actually kind of gave some gravitas to the movie if anything um considering the whole thing's lampoonish and such but like it was too out acted the rest of them those two yeah right there. yeah those two right there like that was like pure acting throughout this movie you know the others they were mostly just having fun and having a good time and you know yeah Me- like i i think mark metcalf really fucking put on a good show apparently when he when he uh read for the scene he didn't know how to horse ride but he learned shortly after he got tired yeah he told them that he could so he's like yeah screw it i'm just gonna gonna do this um one of the scenes that didn't make sense though was like this scene the whole like grieving scene where like he finds out a girl he's dating died and then these two are just like oh that's so terrible it's so terrible that you're dead i know she's dead you want to bang? Let's bang. You know, like they were so like quick. It was like, what? Okay, you know. So I, I you know, uh, it's it's hard for me to say like out of out of the the Delta Squad, there there was any performance that stood up because they're, you know, I wanted to I wanted to love Belushi more, but it was just like rambunctious cartoon monster and, uh, uh, you know, D Day, Mark McGill or, or, or Bruce McGill. He was probably Bruce McGill, D Day, and 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 Mark Metcalf as Niedermeyer there, and also uh, uh, and John, Vernon. John Vernon. John Vernon, yeah. Sorry, I just got my cat on my lap, yeah. and it's just fur up in my face right now. <laughs> I think we're. I think. Oh, Sam says this is a fantastic movie. Sam, are you just saying that because there's all the boobs? There's a lot of boobs. <laughs> There's, uh, there's, uh, but like, you okay, know what? So, and I'm going to talk about it later. There's tons of boobs in this, but none but of But there's it is also 13 year old boobs. And weird. Like, but, I don't, okay, it, what version did you it, watch? Because, like, I watched, like, an original cut version, not realizing that, like, uh, the mayor's daughter was going to be like, I'm 13. You know, apparently the actress at the time was 18, but. You know, she drops that whole bomb that, oh, yeah. like it's, the jailbait bomb. It's it's like this. I like I'm watching this and I'm this, like, she's younger than she's letting on. You know, this and, this movie was for unsavory young fellas. I'll tell you that much. It was like not yes, it's good it's it's not a great movie because it perpetuates the boys will be boys mentality that is was very common back then, and it's yeah. not a good moral to present to anybody at any point in their life that being said if you can um recognize that and then maybe enjoy it in a, a, a bit kind of way i, I don't know it's, it's for me I don't like know. i say i've seen it more than once i liked it yeah. more as a teenager i'll tell you that i watch it now and i'm like problematic but back again when I'm a teenager, it was like boobs. But like I said, none of it's alluring or sexy. Uh, House Party is a way sexier movie, and there's no boobs. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. And a better like, message about sex overall, too. Oh, like, it, it, yeah, man. So get, we're going to have lots we'll of praise we'll for House Party when we get into that, but yeah. The setting the aesthetic, setting was, what do you think? In this one? Um, to me, it was a bit drab to look at. Like, it was. Like, product it of its was. time a bit. But, so yeah, there's... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, the things I found out about this film make make it make a lot more sense, uh, especially considering the whole drab look, the very simple gritty look, the the audio even. Um, you know, uh, apparently the audio engineer asked for a slightly larger budget to put give it stereophonic sound, and they're just like, "Nah, you're good," and he just had to leave you're it good. mono. Yeah. Mono's fine. Um, <laughs> so he's just like all right sure you know and like you can tell listening to this film because like the audio it was a big hit though yeah so no it was, was a big, big hit. hit it was a huge hit and i'm gonna get into those numbers uh, in a second here um okay, well but yeah, let's no, do it, that then the, the setting yeah. and that it was drab setting let's aesthetic i thought we're we're there. grabbing yeah so let's let's get into some movie morsels shall we i think we should All right, Animal House, nineteen seventy-eight. Now I gotta say, this is the larger portion of my movie morsels, so it's almost like a dinner because there's a lot on this, and I couldn't. I I, I tried to whittle this down, so it's you know we got time to waste. Animal House, nineteen seventy-eight. Dwayne Jesse's performance as Otis Day was so successful that he legally changed his name to Otis Day and subsequently toured and recorded with Otis Day in the Nights. The uh, the bass player in the band Otis Day in the Nights is the legendary but then unknown blues guitarist Robert Cray. Cray was just instrumental okay. so good. in getting the musicians together that appeared as the band. Oh man, Robert well, Cray's a legend. Uh, Check out blues fans. If you're a blues fan like me, you already know that. I figured <laughs> I figured some 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 of these names might stand out to you. Um, Donald Sutherland was so convinced of the movie's lack of potential that when offered a percent of the growth... He's an actor. Or, yeah. yeah. He's a real actor. <laughs> when offered a percent of the gross or a flat fee of $75,000 for his three days work, he took the three upfront days. payment. Had he taken the gross percentage, yeah. he would it have did been well. worth an additional three to four million dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, because he was the name. Yeah. He was the only name. His yeah, his he, role is fairly small in this, but he's got he's got his billing and everything. Yeah, he said it was it was one of the most fun films he's ever been on. Um, during an Amy documentary on the 30th anniversary of the movie, it was revealed that when Bluto takes Charming Guy's guitar and smashes it, the scene was completely improvised from the script. The terrified reaction from the actors and actresses is genuine. The hole that John Belushi makes in the wall with the guitar was the only physical damage incurred to the house during the entire production. Instead of repairing it, the fraternity placed a frame around the hole with an engraved brass tag to commemorate it. It's one of the best scenes in the movie. It's the Donald Sutherland scene and there's that guitar scene for me. Um, as this was Kevin Bacon's first role, when he went to the premiere, he wasn't allowed to sit with the rest of the cast because the ushers didn't believe he was in it. He had to sit in the back with everyone else. Um, now he's the legendary Kevin Bacon. That's true. He's a pure legend. He's not sitting in the back with everyone else these days. Um, the actors who played the Deltas harassed the actors who played the Omegas off screen as well to keep up the feelings of animosity between the characters. Um, Mark Metcalf uh, changed his hotel room to the one above Bruce McGill's where the Delta actors partied every night so his anger at their noise would help him get into character. It's pretty uh, great. Yeah. Honestly, when I was like going back and like you know scanning through the movie and like reading these bits, it kind of made me appreciate the film a bit more. But I'm, like at first watch, I was like, eh. um, during filming, John Belushi would often go to local nightclubs to check out the various bands. He was fascinated by a musician named Curtis Salgado. Salgado sunglasses, heart playing, and the love of the blues inspired Belushi to form the Blues Brothers with fellow Saturday Night Live cast member Dan Aykroyd. 
My love, a Murphy <laughs> that had no, no. It doesn't go to D there. I think I should have gone to C. Well, uh, <laughs> the role of D Day was actually written for Dan Aykroyd based off of his mm. motorcycle loving personality, according to John Landis. And producer Lauren Michaels threatened to fire Aykroyd if he took the role. Wow. Oh, yeah. One of the kids, one of the baby's toys just went off. Ignore that, everyone. It's just a pink car singing. It'll stop uh, momentarily. Continue, Murphy. That's it. Well, certainly. Uh, Harold Ramis wrote the part of Boone, also known as Face, for himself to play. But John Landis felt Raymond was too old. Raymond was so, Ramis was so disappointed that he refused to accept a smaller part Landis offered him. Ramis was 32. Uh, Peter Rieger, who eventually played Boone, was 29. So yeah, all these guys 30... were 30. It's the same thing yeah. with House, though. Like, back in the day, teenagers and young, young adults were played by 30, 35-year-olds. But Harold Ramis being 32 and then being involved in the storyline with the mayor's daughter would have made it way, way too creepy. Oh, yeah. Way too yeah, creepy. Would bad. It would have been so bad. Um, it, was, it was bad anyway. Uh, Any more horses Ivan there Reitman's, for us to chew on? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, just a few more. Uh, producer Ivan Reitman's original choice for the roles of Boone and Otter were Bill Murray and Chevy Chase. Uh, however, Landis did not think Chase was right for the part and convinced him to star in Foul Play in 1978 instead by telling him that it was an ensemble film. The role went to Tim Matheson, who later starred with Chase and Fletch, 1985. Uh, Chase has said that he regrets not doing the film. The bottle of whiskey... a lot that better we... with Chevy Chase. Because the problem with this movie is, like, there's not a lot of actors. There's not a lot of good acting. But, yeah. uh, you know, Chevy Chase was great. Uh, the scene where... Dan uh, Aykroyd, Bruno... come on, come on. The scene where... Uh, just wait a second. Uh... The bottle of whiskey that Bluto chugs was actually iced tea. This was part of keeping Belushi away from alcohol and drugs. He was also excluded from the rest of the cast, staying at uh, the Broadway Inn prior to the shoot. Um, so, yeah, him, like, chugging. What a movie to do when you're trying to clean your act up, though. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, also, uh, his... Uh, his iconic college sweatshirt in the film was a gift from his younger brother, Jim, who was an alma mater in Southern Illinois University of Carbondale. And that um, university had shirts that just said college? Apparently so. <laughs> um, which is like, a, which is thus like produced a fashion style for many to enjoy. Um, we've got, so, but, uh, oh God, there's so many. Um. Oh yeah, the lucky boy, the, the Sean McCartan who played the lucky boy, whose wish for a playmate magically comes true, went on to become a pastor at a local church in Cottage Grove, Oregon. A newspaper headline about his story announced, "Lucky boy still thanking God." Mm. <laughs> I thought that was like the funniest. <laughs> um. When looking for colleges to film at, the script was sent over to 250 schools. It was unanimously oh rejected because they all felt it was too raunchy. The president of the University of Oregon only allowed this movie to be filmed on that campus because he decided he did not know how to read screenplays. In 1967, he received the screenplay for a movie, but had denied its permission to film there. That movie was The Graduate from 1967. And he liked that movie so much that he decided he didn't want to miss another opportunity. So he allowed this film to be filmed on the University of Oregon campus. Once the crew showed up, he read the script and quickly regretted his choice. In response, he insisted that the college's name not be listed in the film's credits. But since then, the school's very happily and proud about the film being shot there. Of course. That's pretty funny. Uh, I got... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna read three, four more. 
A sequel was planned uh, that would take place during the 1967 Summer of Love and involved the Deltas reuniting with Otter's wedding. However, when More American Graffiti in 1979 bombed at the box office, Universal stalled the project. It was scrapped for good when John Belushi died in 1982. Um, the movie concludes by describing each character's fate. Uh, Niedermeyer was killed in Vietnam by his own troops. And John Land is a segment of the Twilight Zone, the movie 1983. Some soldiers overheard expressing regret for killing Lieutenant Niedermeyer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when the film was released, John Landis, James Widows, who played Hoover, and Karen Allen, who played Katie, uh, went on to uh, a national promotional tour. Universal Pictures spent about $4.5 million promoting the film at selected college campuses and helped students organize their own toga parties. One such party at the University of Maryland attracted around 2,000 people. While students at the University of Wisconsin-Madison tried for a crowd of 10,000 people in a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. A lot of people wearing bed sheets in that day and age. Back then, yep. Um, John Landis and Bruce McGill staged a scene for reporters visiting the set where Landis pretended to be angry at Bruce for being difficult on set. Landis grabbed a breakaway pitcher and smashed it over McGill's head. He fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious. The reporters were completely fooled, and when Landis asked McGill to get up, he refused to move. <laughs> <Jeez>. um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, uh, and yeah, there's wacky times place. on this set. Oh, I know, like wacky, wacky times. And we're going to get that final two here. Many first-run theatrical releases included shots of a topless Claret after she unhooks her bra and passes out drunk. Later in the film, she admits that she's only 13. By the time home video became widespread, some American obscenity laws forbade showing minors nude in sexual situations, actual or depicted. The later term was meant to describe illicit composite images, but could also be constructed to mean acting. The actress was 18 at the time of filming, but when her character announced her age to be 13, a legally problematic situation arose. And as a result, her bare breasts are absent from early home use copies of the film. Uh, the original version of the movie was two hours and 15 Should've minutes kept it long. That way. Yeah. <laughs> the original version of the movie was two hours and 58 minutes long. Among the scenes deleted were more with Bluto, including a scene where a dishwasher, played by John DeLandis, tries to stop him from eating all the food and gets pulled across the table and thrown on the floor while Bluto says, You don't fuck with the Eagles unless you know how to fly. And an extended version of the scene where Bluto pours mustard on himself and starts singing, I'm the mustard man. Um, and uh, yeah, and cinematography was by Charles Correll, edited by George Fossley Jr., music by Elmer Bernstein, distributed by Universal Pictures on July 28, 1978, 109 minutes long. The budget of this movie was $3 million. The return on investment for box office was one hundred and forty-one point six wow. million dollars. It's a highly profitable movie. I I can't think of any movie that's more profitable than this for, for what they, they head, spent. <laughs> like, yeah, then that crazy. set up, and apparently that set up a lot of downfall for National Lampoon because it became so popular. Uh, a lot of the writers at National Lampoon got offered to write movies and they found out they could make more money writing movies and all those writers dipped off from National Lampoon to become movie writers to ultimately have their own careers ultimately fail. So it's like, as successful as this was for National Lampoon and everyone involved, it also was the downfall of National Lampoon, which is like uh, ironic in a, in a sense. So yeah. Movie is morsels. That's kind of morsel? That's All it. Right, very nice. Rewatchability. So here's the thing. Yes, it does have rewatchability because I've rewatched it a few times. And though I don't like it as much now as an adult, when I rewatched it as a teenager and, you know, young adult uh, in, in, in the rewatching style, it, it held up perfectly fine for me. <laughs> so I think it does. If it's, if it's your bag, it's rewatchable. Um, I, I'm generally one to say, like, I'm not one to rewatch things in general. So it's pretty hard for me to say if something's rewatchable. That being said, I feel like this movie does have rewatchability to it. 
because when I was, again, going through it earlier, there was things I was catching that I wasn't quite catching the first time. And those are like little visual jokes and gags and, and like stuff like that. There's like one where they're all like right before the chaos of the parade, they're all checking their watches. And most of them are all in sync except for John Belushi's, which is like completely opposite and wrong because it's broken more than likely. You know, just like little stuff like that I didn't quite catch on the first time around. Um, so yeah, there's rewatchability in this for me. But does it hold up? No, it doesn't though. It's I agree. It's, it's 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 this it's, is easily our best C movie, but it it doesn't, man. It doesn't. Yeah, it's a like, C plus movie for sure. Um, C plus or B minus. It's it's definitely a time capsule of of the it's that age. Movie. Like it's better yeah. than the majestic I Heart Huckabee's in the apartment. But you know what? The majestic also like a C plus, like, but you know, I actually, I actually had one movie morsel that I forgot okay. about. Uh, just, just one final thing about just the time and age, more or less the reference. And I am having trouble finding it in my notes. So uh, we'll just keep rolling. But it was about basically how this film was filmed oh yeah one bit that was written in the original script and never filmed included a parade bus that was destroyed at the climax of the film all right sorry the writers chose 1962 as a setting because they saw it as the last innocent year of america and the homecoming parade that ends the film is occurring on november 21st 1963 the day before president kennedy's assassination um and one bit that they wrote out included in the parade there was a bust of john f kennedy uh, and his head on the float would have had an exit wound, like the one he suffered when he was assassinated in November of 63. Landis cut the idea because he felt the tone of the gag was too offensive. So, you know. I don't know if it was funny. <laughs> that's, that's National Lampoon for you in the 60s, man. They just, yeah, they didn't yeah. quite give a fuck. Well, this wasn't the 60s. This was the 70s, late 70s. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was this late seventies, and it was they were just yeah, they were just, just pretending to be in nineteen sixty-two. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we agree. Yeah, we yeah, don't agree yeah, as yeah, often. If you look, we mostly have B movies, which is when we disagree. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't sure if, if you were going to consider this one uh, holding up or not, but uh, I'm glad to see that you I, also like. It's rewatchable, to... like. It's rewatchable. It's okay. It has some things, but I don't think it does hold up because a lot of the because it's supposed to be a comedy, like as as a as a movie, it's kind of okay, but none of the humor really lands very often. It, the humor of it doesn't hold up, and it's a comedy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it, like it's it's it's. Better in it's the, hard in the to humor's know. hard to hold. It's the hardest thing to hold up. Yes, humor it is. is very zeitgeist of the time. Often, yeah, it's very subjective of the time for sure. Like if you if you're hip to the scene, if you will, you're gonna laugh mm -hmm. more at the jokes that are being presented at the time than you than you will potentially thirty years because you're just like, what are they talking about? Um, Let's move on to theater two. Where we have house. Oh, party one quick thing. Apparently, okay. One, one, one quick thing. I did forget. Apparently, uh, the scene, the kitchen scene, where Karen Sutherland and Don, Donald Sutherland and Karen Allen, it was asked. Karen Allen was asked to show her butt, but she didn't want to. But Donald Sutherland's like, "I'll do it if you'll do it." So Donald Sutherland, she's like, "Well, if Donald Sutherland's gonna show his butt, then I'll show my butt." So I wasn't expecting to see Donald Sutherland's ass in that movie, but there it was. So. Last last portion. Nova Scotia's own. I know. Real gentleman here. Um <laughs> all right, well let's move on to theater two. House Party, nineteen ninety nine, starring Christopher Kidd Reed, Christopher Play Martin, Tisha Campbell, and Martin Lawrence, directed by Reginald Hudlin. Who wrote a Black Panther run for a while? Done lots of things. That a lot out. of TV shows. Yeah. Excellent representation of Chris's in this film. I love it. 
Lots of Chris's. And one. If my pops finds out I got in trouble in school today, I'm definitely gonna be on punishment. Ah! Uh, there's a party tonight at Peter's house. Can I go? You're not going nowhere. Every little step you take will be around this bedroom tonight. Did you hear anything about a party tonight? Uh uh. At least not any good ones. Hello, Tawatha. Do I feel like being bothered with Tawatha? Hello, LaDonna. Woman, woman. Woman. Yo, baby, you looking real good. Step off. Scandalous. Kick it, Pop. What you got to say now, punk? How much more trouble can I get into? Hey, Eraserhead. Look, I'm in prison. Just do me a favor. Don't pick up the soap. Wait till I find him. I'm gonna kill him. Yo, y'all look who fell into the gig. Hey, this ain't soul train. The two finest women in here. Now, how could a man choose? And he better choose right. Okay, so where we're on our way to? The house party. What? The house party. Jay ain't going to that damn party. That's all to it. I don't give a damn what you say. Gonna make me a social misfit. Is that end bit? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, you know, he eats his breakfast. That's before he goes out. I think that was, was the joke I was gonna say, and then I get thrown off by that ending. Curses. <laughs> okay, so I liked Animal House when I was younger, and I was hoping it was gonna hold up a little better than it did. But this movie, I loved as a kid. When I was a kid, I loved Kid and Play. House Party, House Party Two, Class Act, all of their movies, man. I was, I was a big fan. So I was really rooting for this movie, and I, honestly, I don't think I was disappointed. I still love this movie, so I'll get into the plot here, and we can talk about it. I, I always spoil my holdups before we get started. It seems, but it's just my style, I guess. I did. I did yeah. cut out the scene um, where, where the, honestly, like the plot set up almost in, in the in the kitchen or not the kitchen, but the cafeteria where they have the conversation mm -hmm. after he gets to the school there. So yeah, well, yeah, it starts in the cafeteria, and the, they're 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 checking out the ladies and stuff, and uh, play announces that he's having a party over at his place because his parents are out. And he wants his buddy Bilal to be the DJ, played by Martin Lawrence. And, you know, Kid gets into an altercation with the bully, Stab, his name is, and his two brothers, <laughs> Pee Wee and Zilla. Pee Wee's the worst character in this whole movie. I love all the characters in this movie except for Pee Wee. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. No, 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 don't get up. Don't get up. I'll, I'll get you another milk, okay? I'll, I'll pay for it myself, okay? You need a milk? I, I can get you one. I'll be right back. If I was you, I'd kick his fucking ass. Damn. I don't like you, kick his fucking ass. He's weird. I know he's just supposed <laughs> to be a weird, jokey character, but yeah, yeah. But it's Stab and Zilla. Those are good names. I figure, like Pee Wee, because this is a party movie that it's just. But it's like playing off of Porky's because there was that character Pee Wee in Porky's, which I almost picked instead of Animal House. But I, I Porky's is worse. So if Animal House didn't hold up, Porky's sure as hell did. Um, I barely remember so, Porky's, and yeah, uh, that's... be glad. Yeah, that's the that's that was the B movie Animal House. So he kid comes home and he's trying to convince his old man Pop. He calls him who's. Maybe my favorite character in this. We'll talk about that later. But Pop's pretty great. Um, I'll have to think about it. Actually, by the uh, legendary uh, Robin Harris. Yeah, Robin Harris. Yeah, he's in a lot of things. Yeah, uh, because he the kid knows there's eventually a note coming home to say he got in this fight at school. So yeah, he's looking for that. He's pink 
And eventually it does show up. So he's he says he can't go to the party, so he has to sneak out later. <laughs> because his old man's watching Dolomite. He's just like, what, you don't want to watch Dolomite with me? You grew up on Dolomite. <laughs> oh, the, I loved, I loved how he quoted Dolomite. I was just like, yes. Uh, yeah, he's always muttering under his breath as he's walking away to his goddamn. Like he gets in an altercation with the cops later. Pop does, and that's freaking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> apparently, all of his lines and John Witherspoon's lines were improvised for this movie. Like mo- the majority of them. Apparently. I believe it. Just sounds like John Witherspoon. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe it. You gotta have John Witherspoon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he's on his way to the party, and he runs into Stab and his brothers again. So he's trying to get away, and he runs, and he see he ends up peeping on this guy having sex with his lady, and, who, <laughs> but, and then that buddy notices and grabs it. I remember that scene from a kid so much that that scene I n- never escaped my mind because he, he just shoots at them like instantly. He's just like peep for <laughs> Like, <laughs> freaks want to yeah. keep beeping on me. Keep this. Yeah. <laughs> so eventually, they he gets there, and uh, no, he 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 goes to that reunion. Like, uh, what is it? It's oh, like an, yeah. an older people's party or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, no, with it, DJ. <laughs> You want to see how crazy I am? Yo, what you looking at, man? I ain't the man in the mirror. Good, man. Dingo, leave the brother alone. You want a little pie in your head? Lighten up. Yeah, I did it. You might cry two tears in a bucket. Fuck it. Let's take it to the stage. Made by George Clinton. The legendary George Clinton. In the parliament, I saw George Clinton say, and I'm like, where is he gonna show up? And of course, he's just like at yeah, this DJ man. blowing dust off of records. Yeah, man. So he ends up at that party, and he does a bit of rap in there. See, this is just there's awesome. Okay, the music is done by Marcus Miller, and Marcus Miller is easily my favorite bass player. I think the greatest bass player of all time. Listen to as much Marcus Miller as you can out there, people. Marcus Miller, look it up, man. So the music is so good in this. See, this is what a parody movie is to me, and is what like Animal House was trying to be, and I guess probably was in its day, which is a movie that you can put on during a party. But Animal House fails at that, I find. Whereas this one is absolutely that because there's like awesome Marcus Miller background music through the whole thing. There's Kid and Play doing actual performances and raps. Because they're actual musicians, they do that sort of thing, and dance scenes and like, you know, fun one-liners. Like you could be at a party and just look up every now and then and enjoy what you're watching. This is the, this is a party movie. This is what party movies should be. Um. So there, there they are. There, yeah, we were about to do a rap. I used to love, man. I loved these guys when I was a kid. And I think I still do. So, but back to the plot. So they, yeah, kid gets to the party eventually, and there's a dan- He gets into a dance contest to try to uh, impress Sydney and Shireen, who like. There's a bit of a see. That's an interesting thing too. They the stereotypical thing would have been for like kid and play to be after the same girl. But that's not what's going on yeah. here. It's two girls that are after the same guy, which is they're both yeah. kind of interested in kid. So yeah, it's, I liked, it, I liked it, how they did that. They didn't fall into any of the cliches of these types of movies. I found this was smart, smartly done for a movie that's you know just a party movie. The plot's not any great, great thing or anything. It's just about you know the the style and how you construct it nice party movie with likable characters and and funny dialogue and and good music that's what you need um so yeah they get to the dance contest which is awesome i love that dance contest that was fun yeah but kid's father's out looking for him because he knows he snuck off so he's he's looking he eventually shows up at the party and he wants to know where kid is uh 
but he doesn't find him. So he's going to wait for him at home. And he ends up running into the cops, which is funny. He's just like, <laughs> where am I going or something like that? And he's just like, like 32, uh, 30 up a co- fresh up a cop's ass or something like that. He's just like, oh, friggin'. <laughs> well, the cops run it. So, like, before Kid even gets to the party, he gets pulled over. Yeah. By, by the cops are there because of John cops. Witherspoon. John Witherspoon didn't yeah. like the noise. Yeah. They, they, well, they ended up, they ended up, you know, running into his dad before his dad got to the party. Um, and then, yeah, his dad was looking for him. I think Kid at that point was taking Shireen and Sydney home. He was walking them. Yeah. He was walking them home. Yeah. Back to. Well, Shireen. that's after the party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I well, guess that's it's sort of after. It's yeah. I feel like it's more or less during because at the because yeah, that's when his dad showed up looking for them because he grilled. No, wait, she was upstairs. Chris is upstairs with Shireen. Sydney was on the steps. His dad came in and he got grilled by Sydney, and then she was like, "Nah, there's nothing here. You can go about your way." Yeah. yeah, he's like smooching with Shireen, and, and Sydney's just like, "What?" Because they were talking, and Sydney thought that. Shireen was going to back off and let her go after Kid, and that didn't really happen. So they're at odds a little bit, but, you know, they're still friends. They don't really get into it and any, like, catty bullshit or anything. Like, again, they avoid all the the stereotypical bullshit. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, they get in that kitchen scene. Shireen's just sort of like, listen, I didn't really make a move, so if you want to make your move, make your move. And then the legendary cameo of Letty C. Washington coming in. (laughs) <laughs> just kind of giving her the eye. I don't know if anyone recognizes this guy, but he's the cameraman in UHF. I don't even know that movie. Have you not seen UHF? No. Ah, uh, can ah uh, can can that I'll be a movie a... we watch during the television category? I'd have to pick it in the television category. Yeah, maybe I'll see what I picked for that. Yeah, because that. If you've we'll never see. seen UHF, seen I implore it. All right, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. You have to admit Southland Tales was terrible. Okay, for UHF, I'll admit Southland Tales was terrible. <laughs> Sweet. It's an easy I'm dropping it down to a C movie. <laughs> I'm dropping <laughs> Southland Tales down. Get away, get away from my gremlins, Southland Tales. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So you know, there's not a lot of uh, a lot of plot here. There's the will they, won't they? He ends up smooching with Shireen a bit, but you know, there's a bit of back and forth there, and he realizes that he likes Sydney better because there's a nice line there too. He's just like she asks him straight up, like, "Who do you want to be with?" Or whatever. He's like, "Well, if I got to make a choice." Which he's kind of disappointed about. He's like, <laughs> it's like if I, it's like if I had to kiss a lot anywhere, and if I had to die before I kissed you, like fucking Ang says to, like, just like completely yeah. put your foot in your mouth, my guy. Like she's trying to give you size, just like, and you're not picking it up. You're the one I see myself being friends with. Is she's just like, oh, but he's just like, and you know, I think you got to get down with someone you're friends with too. And she's just like, oh, so. <laughs> He's he's a lyricist. He oh that was, toy it, was a good line. it was a good line. It was a good line though, you know. Um, and yeah, oh, then God. they want to get get down to the nookie where he can stake that cookie, but he doesn't have oh, a rubber for instead cookie. That's true. It's dust. That's true. <laughs> and that's when the like everyone's giving him shit. They're like, "What? Why did you let that stop you?" And he like, yeah. Oh, I, but, you I know, love he stands this up moment. to that idea, and he's the star. They're just like he's just like I don't want to have a kid right now. He's just like that's that's her problem. You just got to pay the bills. Yeah, play like, well, such an asshole. That's not how I do things. Yeah. yeah. Well, play usually I'm... plays the bad guy in all their movies. In one movie, they're they're not even they don't even know each other, and they're like one's a play is the bad guy, and kids the good guy. So that's just how Ooh. they they do it. Um. Well, then he's he's doing his job well, but yeah, no, like I I I really liked that message in the film. It like at the heart, this is a very wholesome movie. <laughs> it is, and it's a party movie. Like that's it, this is a good movie, man. It manages to be a party movie, but not be offensively misogynistic or any actually misogynistic really at all. Other than you know the the young teenagers, they have sort of that attitude where all they're focusing on is getting laid, but that's just that's just honest. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not like peeping in. They don't peep in window. Well, they did peep in a window, but it was an accident. It wasn't John Belushi climbing up a ladder. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they it stared. Was, they stared away. an extra oh, few seconds, mind you. But I think they were more just uh, interested in Buddy's dialogue as he was having sex with this lady because he was him. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Like when he's like leaning out the window and he's pointing the gun, he might have been a big man. But he was a good-looking big man. Like he, he was like the the sweat he was glistening off him. He like he yeah. the, his muscles were ripped. Yeah. But he still he had, had that weight on him. He was he was yeah. he was a thick boy. You know, it's it's thick yeah. boy summer, I believe. So like, I mean, if, if the it... ladies are looking for a thick boy, check out the check out the man getting a swerve on in the house party scene. <laughs> You're gonna find one in this basement. <laughs> No one's ever gonna call me a thick boy. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. So back to the plot, I guess we're pretty much getting to the end of it. Kid ends up in jail. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly. So. Yeah. So they have to get him out of jail. And they do. Yeah, they uh, tell him not to drop, he, not to pick up the soap. Yeah. Uh. Play. Uh. Bilal and play eventually gather Shireen yeah. and Shireen and, and Sydney and Sydney. Um, and while they're doing exactly. that, kid uh, is wrapping his ass off in the prison to keep his booty from being. It's true. They're all going to attack him. He's just like, wait a minute, let me entertain you for a minute. And that's kind of the last full, like full musical scene where they're like the actors, the characters that are actually doing the music in in world, you know. Mm. So, like, this one's actually, like, a bit of a musical as well. Rather than just have the music, which was quite good at times in Animal House, it's still part of the background. Even when Otis Day is playing, the scene is just going on around him. And yeah. Music's yeah. the focus of the scenes in this. Um, so that's pretty much the end. They get Kid out of jail. I think his old man tells him off. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so what happens is they get Kid out of jail. They drive everyone home. Shireen and Play walk in. Shireen does her like, not today, mister. Maybe another day. You got to work for it. And Play is like, what do you mean? So he gets basically uh, boomeranged, which which was Reginald's H- Hudlin's uh, last theatrical film before he went on to a TV career. Eddie Murphy's boomerang. Um, Eddie Murphy's boomerang, which is about a womanizing man that... Uh, eventually gets his comeuppance when a womanizing or a manonizing woman uh <laughs> manonizing woman yes that's how that's yeah how uh she comes she comes along and shows him what's up so there's a there's a little little hint to that um uh between play and shireen and yeah sydney and chris uh mm. say their goodbyes uh and in front of Bilal and play and those guys are like wait now then they're driving home. That's when they sort of have the talk. Did you get some? I can tell you got some. You must have got some. And he's like, nah, we're going to wait it out. I'm, you know, being cool. And that was the important message of this film is like, you know, just because you're going to get get some doesn't mean you just go for it unless the uh, elements and everything involved are not. You know, perfectly correct. Yeah, Sydney says yeah, him, she's like, be other times. He's just like, yeah, but it'll probably be a long time from now. Yeah, because he knows he's going to go <laughs> home and get grounded and get his ass whooped. And just as and he's whooped, and he know, does he gets... get whooped. The credits start to roll while he's getting whooped by pops at home. Yep. Whooped. And is the belt ready? I don't... The belt is Did ready. You... <laughs> Do you end the movie uh, uh, basically there? Have you always ended the movie there? Or did you keep watching through the credits? Is there an end scene? I'm there sure is an end credit scene, scene here. It's, I don't it's think this I watched one, it today. I, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't know they're the rest of the cookies. I'm sorry. Look, my grandma's 87 years old. I don't know how many years she's got left to make cookies okay. in the first place. You didn't have to finish the rest of them. I'm sorry. I don't sorry. know how many years I've got left in my grandmother. They were good, though. They were good, though. Look at that. And that's how the movie ends. And it just goes out to the rest of the credits. Yeah. 
forgot about that. Didn't watch that this time. Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't know that was in there. I was just like, wait, there's a post credit scene? What is this, the MCU? Mm-hmm. Well, all right. So, which scene would you hold up, Murphy? Oh, or man, scenes. without... Scene or scene. Doubt. Uh, definitely. Yo, kid, man. Yo, do that dance stuff you was doing out there on the dance floor. I've been trying to get that all night, man. No, 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 I really don't feel like Yo, that. Yo, come on, man. No, no, I'm really not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. All right. I love, do I love how he sets us up and plays wait into minute, it. Wait a minute. Don't give up so easy. I'll teach you. I don't, don't give up so easy. I don't be like that. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. Yo, come yeah. on, man. Now, this is very complicated. Are you doing? This ain't aerobic. Doing aerobic. You can't do it. <laughs> is that a job? I think it. it is. And you then him and Groove just wall. like bust into oh, it. Hey, look, you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Should we do this? Come on, let's do this. Do you have sex or do you make love? How do you live? Do you give it? Do you take it? Well, this is a great scene. Like, if you were just at a party and you looked up and this started, you'd watch the entire thing. Like, that scene was so, like, that's when the party really kicks off, and it, like, it goes off, and you're like, okay, I see what this is about. Um, that and the rap battle. The rap battle is, like, hands I wanted to yeah. cut a scene from that, but I feel yeah. like that would maybe potentially cause too many issues or whatever. But ultimately, like, I'm telling you, that rap battle was so good. The way he ends it, how he's, like, play got played, and, like, everyone's, like, freaking out. Like, it was, it was such a... A fun scene um and you can tell like that's kind of like you know like i guess the whole basis these guys want to show off their talents as as rappers and musicians and like i'm all for it um so yeah like play got played out like that was the, just the whole the whole thing honestly kind of gave me um eight mile vibes like it made me kind of want to like go back and watch eight mile um i know you probably eight have mile. never watched that that uh, adam and, 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 oh, and, yeah, and, and, and yeah where he like he goes and he like rap battles it's it's a really good film like take out the fact that like this is eminem you know um and it's make it your pick i got nothing against eminem you know what if we do if we do a rap category then i would probably pick eight mile but i can't remember we're doing a music category you can throw it in there Ah uh, no, I picked I picked uh, I picked something for that category that I really yeah. want to watch called yeah. Ungaku. Um, it looks yeah, pretty wild. Um, so actually, I agree with you. Those are the scenes I would hold up as well. And there's yeah. a lot of good scenes in this, but those are my favorite. And and the ones with pops, pops in, oh, and pops in the cops. You don't happen to have that, eh? Uh, when he's talking to the cops, uh, it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. I'd- I don't have that scene. I should have cut that up. Uh, That's all right. That was a great one. So yeah, that was a good one. Let's move on to performances. Reason to watch this movie if you haven't. Performances. Uh, good. Martin Actually, Lawrence is amazing in this. Martin Lawrence is freaking hilarious. There you go. His room is hilarious. The slippery yeah, when wet man. wall, like, and his oh he, it, you could tell he was putting it us all into it. Him being called like Dragon yeah. Breath. The like, he's like, yo, chill, chill, stop hitting the table, stop bumping the table, chill, chill. I ain't gonna beat this man. <laughs> like, you are not leaving with my gear, you are not driving away with my gear oh. in your van. Oh, that's, you know, let's cut that one too because he's just like, he's waiting for him forever and plays. Like, no, oh, I said it's no. Done. He's just like, there's nothing no. he can do to stop this from happening. He's just like, no, yeah. play. Just go with yeah. it. Like, uh, oh yeah. man. Um, and, uh, Kid and play were both really good. Kid's always yeah. really good. They usually make him the star. He's a good actor. On, he he um, really and Pops. held Pops the was film amazing. together. Yeah, he held the film together for sure. He was supreme. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, and Sydney was good. Robin's Sydney was good. Yep. Oh yeah, Sydney was amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, she's so good. Yeah. I, yeah. They're I, all likable characters. Like this movie doesn't show any boobs on like Animal House. Like I said, and it's way sexier. The girls are just very like cool and sexy. They're dressed cool in nineties. Um, it's awesome. And, you know, um, it's not the last time Tisha Campbell and Martin Lawrence worked together. They eventually moved on to the Martin Lawrence Show, which was a fun and entertaining show during its time. I don't know if anybody watched that. But... 
I didn't watch yeah. that one. I'm aware of it, but I didn't know. All right, so those are the performances we would hold up. Uh, the setting aesthetic, awesome. I mean, it's colorful. Yeah. It's bouncing. It's everything that Animal House is not, as far as looking at it visually. the The shots are interesting. Yeah, like that one. Like they're interesting shots. There's a one lot of the movement. clogged toilet that sets play off. Like the yeah, it's really like mm -hmm. really done light. Well done lighting. It's interesting actually too, because I kind of like ended up watching the trailer for Boomerang to see. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Reginald sort of like difference from this film where it's all I colorful it's a boomerang where it's like a lot of white backgrounds like like very like white and gray backgrounds it's kind of interesting um but yeah no it's a great film great aesthetic entertaining very yeah, much. Right. Yeah, you get any morsels for us Mark? oh i got some movie morsels for you <laughs> All right, House Party in 1990. The movie was filmed at Play's Real Life Home in Los Angeles, California. Um, during the party at Play's house, all of the dance sequences were done with no music. A.J. Johnson choreographed her and Tisha Campbell's routine for the battle. The toe touch and kicks were actually signature moves for Kid and Play. They had become very popular as backup dancers for Salt and Pepper. Uh, using these and more acrobatic stunts, the music was added after the dancing had been shot. Um, house party. Yeah, she was really good, AJ Jones. She was fantastic. Um, house party was originally offered to DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, also known as DJ Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith. <laughs> oh, this happened because Kid and Play is yeah. better. I always liked Kid and Play better. Uh, this happened because New Line Cinema won a lawsuit against them due to their song "A Nightmare on My Street," and one of the conditions. Yeah, I love Nightmare on My Street. One of the conditions were that they had to appear in a New Line film. Director Reginald Hudlin refused to cast them in the movie based on that term. So good call, uh, Reginald. Yeah. Um, I mean, Fresh Prince was a great TV show, but this yeah. movie needed to be kid and play. For sure. Yeah, I kind of. I kind of want to watch the Bel Air revived version because it's you know, new and dramatic. I, I want to see what it's about. I want to see. I mean, it's got Will Smith stamp. You can tell me about it. Oh, For 25 oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, this was Look, so, final... does, so does Chris Rock's face as far as that stamp. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was the final film released before the death of Robin Harris. Uh, the movie happened to be released nine days before the legendary comedian had passed away of a heart attack at just the age of 36 Man. on March 18th, oh. 1990. House Party 2, which was released was a year funny. later in 91, uh, the film is dedicated to him. However, it was not his last one as he appeared in Mo Better Blues in 1990, which was oh, released yeah. I remember five Wayans. months after he died. Yeah. Mo Better Blues, man. Um, all these house, Wayne's movies. house Party is considered a cult classic highlighting the golden age of hip-hop uh, music. Sorry, let me say that again. House Party, is a, house Party is considered a cult classic highlighting the golden age of hip-hop music when its culture was centered around parties, fun, and... Uh, Sorry, parties, fun, and consensual affairs, rather than the, the drugs, violence, and misogyny that came after its predominance in the early to mid nineties. I'm so super nostalgic for that era of hip hop. I can't even tell you, man. I, oh, I miss it. I miss it, man. It'd be it nice if that kind of resurgence would come back, but yeah, I don't see it happening. Probably but... won't. <laughs> I'm old, but that was my day. <laughs> that was that was my hip hop. The uh, the shower scene in the first act, as uh, as well as the use of post credits uh, scene, are references to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, one of several classic mm. teen movies that inspired House Party's premise. Uh, House Party also and opens Corky's with a dream sequence. Uh, oh yeah, uh, House Party opens with a dream sequence, much like Risky Business, an '80s teen film that shares a similar premise of a kid throwing a house party while his parents are out of town. Uh, some of the ca some of the cast's real age was much older than. Uh, oh, yeah, they're all thirty to thirty-five. <laughs> they're all playing twenty-one-year-old. Well, Martin Lawrence was twenty-five, Kid was twenty-six, and Play was twenty-eight. 
but they were supposed to be high school students. Uh, Robin Harris was only 36 and 10 years older than the kid who played his son. Uh, like John Ryan, Witherspoon. Only 36. He looked older than 36. I'm not surprised he kicked the bucket shortly after, man. Dude, he must have, he must have had, had a hard liver. Diet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny, though, man. He was funny. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. my neighbor's like Back to the morsels. The, yeah, sorry, I got distracted by a neighbor. Uh, John Witherspoon and BB Drake also played husband and wife in the movie Boomerang, released in '92. Uh, near the end of the movie, play suggests that they go to his house and watch Crush Groove from 1985 and Beat Street from 1984. Both Paul Anthony and B. Fine were in the former. Uh, last four morsels, uh, full force, an American mu music group of hip hop and R&B singers and producers from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. New York, played the bullies in this movie. Um, mm -hmm. Anthony Johnson, who plays the guy with short, uh, Jerry curl hair at the party returned in house party three in 94 as butcher. In 2022, it was selected for preservation in the national national film registry by the library of Congress deeming it culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Um, and the last morsel, the first three movies in the House Party film series began with the kid's character having a dream of some sort. In this film, he dreams of a party and the roof blowing off of a house. In the Pajama Jam, he has a nightmare oh, about man. a dream. Oh, college. I love that one. And in House Party 3, he dreams about his upcoming marriage. House Party 4 and 5 do not continue with the dream sequence. Cinematography was by Peter Deming, edited by Earl Watson, music by Lenny White and Marcus Miller. Marcus distributed Miller, by New man. Line Cinema, distributed by New Line Cinema. Uh, New Line Cinema. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. I don't know why it's cinnamon. cinnamon toast. <laughs> uh, releasing date was March 9th, 1990, with a 100 minute runtime. Its budget was two point five million dollars, and it was a hundred minutes well spent. Twenty six point four million dollars. Apparently, I had a bug crawling on my neck. What the fuck? <laughs> You're covered in scorpions. Covered Apparently. in scorpions. Um. So yeah, that's that's house party from nineteen ninety. Those are the movie morsels. No. Well, Rewatchability, yes, yeah, yes. yes. I loved it as a kid. Yes. I watched it ten times as a kid, and I still love it today. And oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you agree with me too, Murphy. This movie oh, yeah. is probably, I think, the best party movie. I don't think we'll ever find one because it has the music, it has the dancing, it has likable characters, it has actual humor that's funny. Um, oh man. So does it hold up? Yes, yes to me, it yes, definitely it does. does. This movie is timeless. It does. It, I'm super nostalgic for that era of hip hop for sure, but it's just fun, man. Like, like you say, it wasn't about misogyny and all this type of stuff that movies before and you know, hip hop became a bit more after. It, this was the golden era where people just wanted to go to parties, have fun. Of course, you know, hook up with a pretty lady if you can, but you know, it's uh, this was wholesome. It was, it was, it was a wholesome yeah, parody it was, movie. It was definitely reflective of the '90s, where it was like, uh, you know, you wanted to flex in high school. You definitely wanted to try and find your first girl. Um, you wanted to go to parties and have a good time. It was almost. It wasn't. It, it's it's definitely to, to further emphasize on your point that it's the perfect party film. Um, mm -hmm. It is essentially the perfect party film. Like, there's no drinking at the party. There's no refreshments because Pelly's like, oh, I guess they were eating. You know, he didn't bring them, right? Yeah, so there's, there's he's like, you should have got here earlier when we had all kinds of that stuff, and it's just like you missed out. The only guy that is drinking at the party, Groove, gets lambasted and shit on by everybody because they think he's a loser for drinking. Okay, so there's that whole, like, dare aspect of, of the film. Um, then there's everybody's, like, dancing uh, perfectly. Now, I, you know, I don't know. You, you and I have been to our fair share of kitchen parties in Nova Scotia. Oh, yes. They're famous. How many, of, how many of those had, like, choreographer dance breakouts? Not enough of them. Not enough. Three. 
<laughs> okay, you've definitely been to some parties. The few that I've been to, I don't think I've ever witnessed a choreographer dance breakout. I wish there were more. Um, you know, there's no rap battles. Nice no dance. Yeah, no off. rap dance battles. Dance off, no. sure, but they're not that good. Yeah, no, they're not. They're not nearly as good as that. Um, so yeah, like it, it, those those aspects. It's essentially the perfect party movie. And then you have the contrast of Animal House, which is a lampoonish party movie and is outrageous on many, many degrees from, you know, morality to just reality. Uh, we've got House Party, which is just sort of like the Goldilocks of party films. It's just right. It's just right. Yeah. Yes. I feel right? like the Reginald Hudlin watched Animal House and just decided to fix it. He's just like, here, you take it rid of this, add this. No, make, like, no peeping. If you are peeping, you're going to get shot at. And you're going to seem like you're the jerk. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well done, Reginald yeah. Hudland. Yeah. And, it and, does indeed and, hold yeah. up. Check it out, everybody. Is If you're throwing a party, throw it up on the screen, man. House party. Yeah, the golden age of hip-hop. All right, well, let's move on. We're making pretty good time here for us. I, can't, I don't have much to say about this next one, I'll tell you. So, I, I, Theater 3. We have Theater Shithouse. Theater 3. Uh, yes, from 2020, right. starring Cooper Rafe, Dylan Galula, Logan Miller, and Amy Landecker. Directed also by Cooper Rafe, which uh, <laughs> is perhaps the problem here. But continue. <laughs> Yeah, so shit house. Uh, to you just share it for us? Just oh well, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I guess sorry. Uh, get ahead of myself before before we watch this trailer. Um, also because I'm yeah, go ahead. Um, just to put a final note on our 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 three party films. The one that's mm -hmm. you know lampoonish. The one that's golden locks, Goldie just right. This was very film, different than the other two. This is very different, and if anything, is probably the most realistic portrayal of what a lot of parties are like these days, if anything. Um, so there's that. So you kids toy again. As soon as you hit this trailer, are getting I'm ready for the party it. here. What did you say? I just asked if y'all are getting ready. Yeah, you just called the Uber. You coming? Um, I'm not sure yet. Oh, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Why is college so hard? Oh, I love college so much! I feel like I'm just like floating. Ouch. You're trouble, aren't you? I'm trouble? You okay? Yeah, I'm just not feeling well and it's super frustrating. Am I not allowed to sleep here? No, you can. Am I like keeping you up? Oh no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't sleeping. Do you want to like go hang out? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. So you're a sophomore, right? Yeah. Did you have a tough first year? What do you mean, like, adjusting? Can I tell you a secret? I have zero friends. <laughs> like you could say, my roommate is a friend. Sam, we need to get up. I didn't do nothing. Dropped a deuce in our room. Okay. Yeah. But we hate each other and aren't friends. I have a final tomorrow. Do you want to work together? Um, Which final? History. Um, the 18th century. Uh, paint. Paint? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Sorry. Do you mind if I just get past you? Oh my god. You sent her so many messages. Hey, what's going on? Hey. See you. Are you sure that that was um the girl? Yeah. It just seems like she didn't know that you existed. Why do you want to just go back to what you were doing? Did you think we were gonna date because of one night? Tonight, we're making new friends. Let's get outside the comfort zone. Maggie is outside of my comfort zone though. What I've realized is that I haven't fully been here. College is the most selfish time of your life. The agenda here is not to learn how to be a great friend. What is the agenda? Figure out who you are. Figuring out who you are separate from other people. Oh! Oh my god. If you are so bad at pitching. I know. So yeah, 
has. 2020 so, shithouse. Why don't you tell us the plot of shithouse? But first, I gotta say, I don't think this movie's necessarily bad, but I think I'm too old for it. It's kind of like Dawson's Creek without the big words in the creek. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's not a, that's not a uh, terribly incorrect assessment. Um, when I picked this film, um, I wanted to go with a modern parody film because, like, I kind of wanted that that um, barometer, contrast. if you will. Yeah, the contrast, mm. the barometer. I wanted to see, like, okay, we've had parties in the the '60s, '70s. We had a party in the '90s. What's the parties like today? And this one, you know, being an award-winning and all that stuff, seemed mm-hmm. like the ideal one. And the title, Shit House, makes you think it's going to be a raunchous, uh, almost comedy-like it. thing. But it's they don't even spend much time in the shit house. I'm not sure why it's called. Shit house. No, they no. They, so there's, the so there's like there's two parties. There's one party at the, at shit, the shit house, house, and then there's another party at the ball or basketball house, house. Like a basketball yeah. players' house. Yeah. Um, essentially, this movie is uh, is about the ego death of cooper rafe's character royce's character so shit and i'm guessing cooper rafe in real life or this is how he wanted it to play out like this just feels like somebody just bearing their soul sort of yeah it's also like it's funny that they're playing first year university students because it feels like it's written by a first year university student because it's just like these are all like all these realizations and these concepts that the the characters in this are grasping with are like very boring by the time you're like 23, for example. It's just like, yes, that's like, so it is like very much a coming of age in that way. I guess it's supposed to feel like that. But yeah, being just, 30 for somebody our this... age, it's just a little painful to watch. In, at times. Yeah. Being somebody 36, I'm like, I, I get it. Cause I've been there. Like I know these emotions and mentalities he's going through. Um, so I, I related was so to that. long ago. It's just like, it was, was so long ago. ago. I know, but like, like I, can, I, 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 understood, I know I understood it to like a cringe degree, and I'm like, oh god, this is painful. To yeah, watch. me too. And the, and the plot of Shit House 2020 is uh, Which, you know, I guess it's pretty, good on that level because it does have an effect. But yeah, uh, Shit House is written, it. directed by, and starring Cooper Rafe. Cooper Rafe. Uh, uh, and it's a coming-of-age story about a 19-year-old college freshman named Alex who's struggling to adjust to college life and make connections with his peers. Uh, he spends the first six months of his, uh, of, of, his, of his freshman year pretty much hiding in his dorm room with his room. Can I just say, like, um, the entire conflict of this movie is just that Alex is a bit of a mama's boy. Yeah, It's like yeah, the entire definitely. conflict of this movie. <laughs> yeah, um, he, misses he, meets his a soph- <laughs> he meets a sophomore yeah. residential advisor named Maggie at a party, and uh, the two bond over their shared struggles with family issues and grief. Maggie recently uh, lost her pet turtle um, and is just kind of like, you know, getting all hinged and, and, getting, and getting turned up, if you will. Uh, however, the relationship become, ship becomes strained uh, when Alex becomes overly attached after a one night stand basically and maggie pushes him away leading to a fight and a temporary breakup if you will um after some self-reflection though uh alex works on building relationships with other students and eventually reconciles with maggie who then becomes his girlfriend um so that's just that's a brief synopsis of of the film basically this guy is in his dorm room and meets his rumination from teenagers (laughs) yeah well you know he's He's 19. He's from more like te- Texas or whatever. Um, yeah, apparently he calls his mom and his sister all the time, and he and he has trouble uh, dealing. His with His big the realization is that he's half in, in in university and half at home with his family, and he needs to go all in on the university side. That's the big coming of age realization. Like they're just a bit. The big things he was playing at here are almost just a bit too basic. Now, I could see a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old watching this and really connecting with it and thinking it really speaks to them, and that's fine. It's just a bit too... I don't want to say dumbed down, but it's just a bit too... Like, it felt like an act in a movie. 
spread out to the length of the movie. Like this seems like the first act of a coming of age movie. But, <laughs> well, you can but it you was can tell like through movie. scenes like yeah, like it, you can tell through like some of the scenes. There's a very like apathetic and sort of mm. like, he's answering questions with like get some multiple choice stuff in here and. He's, he's having it, mental it conversations seems, with stuff. Wolf, yeah. where it's like college sucks, but you're also not trying, you know, which is very much the message of the movie is college sucks, but you're not trying. If you sit inside all day and uh, listen to your shitty roommate, you're you're gonna have a bad time. Um, and and it, it actually takes his shitty roommate literally to be shitty for him to to leave leave the house um yeah, he poops his pants here. the roommate has a little bit of an accident sam yeah sam fuck do you, do you think the, he's talking the about acting sam was actually sam, decent in this hmm? like is, is this sam our, our fan sam no, no is that super fan sam pass it is on that the super floor fan sam? Yeah. he did love animal house oh shit we're gonna go to the shower okay and get your pants off no, these are my good pants. These no, are these what? are my good pants. These are my good pants. I know, I know they're good pants, but the you you, you pooped in them, so we we need to at least get up and go to the shower. I didn't, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. Dude, no. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. Drop the. I didn't. Do this is like a real conversation with a, somebody passed out drunk. There are some. Good yeah, stuff like you. Like, you know, he, like, lived off, like, these moments. But, yeah, like, this oh, just, yeah. like, shows the awkward energy that they present throughout this entire film, right? This just feels like too much of an autobiography to me. It just seems like a bit too self-indulgent. A bit too much of somebody thinking they're more clever than they are. Yeah, know. when I was watching this, I was like, man, the, the writer of this film really is kind of, like, putting it all. And then I found out that the guy I was watching wrote the film, and I was like... I wish I didn't know that. That almost soured me on the movie more. I like having something heavy in my hand yeah. to hold at a party. Yeah, I get that. I feel like that, it's just like too dinky when you hold it. You know what I mean? It is dinky. But yeah, no, like this this whole scene, like it's just so cringy and I, it's like, ah, and like... All of his lines, too, are just movie. repeating the line that was just said to him. He's just like, yeah, it's too dinky. Like, he does that through, like, the whole movie. He just kind of repeats what's said to him. Yeah, and, yeah. I guess yeah. that's supposed it's to sort of show nerves. Of the scene. But, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just it, such, yeah. A, it's such a weird, awkward movie. Like, he's always, you know, going with his mom, like, talking to his mom. Like, the scene where they even have sex, it's like the first time they go to have sex they don't quite get it off and then they proceed to like walk through the night he finds out about his turtle and tries to be all sweet and then they eventually get together you know and it actually leads to a funny line where he's just like she's just like am i the first person you've had sex with in college he's just like we haven't had sex yeah <laughs> she's like oh am i the first person <laughs> oh, yeah. that you've made out with naked in college and it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um so like yeah it's just it's a lot of a lot of stretch there's a lot of emptiness in this there's a, there's barely a few scenes and like realistically the it's scene even at least a half hour shorter yeah well that that's so yeah i guess this was originally a short film apparently like mm -hmm. i when i looked for movie morsels for this thing i was scraping bottom barrel that's why i was so heavy on the animal house movie morsels because i got like three for this film at best um the the one scene that i honestly think holds up throughout the entire movie is ironically the end scene where Maggie is acting something entirely different to the movie and she does a great job about it. This is my this is arguably the best. I liked her movie. actually. She's a good actress. Stop. You said the same thing last year. Yeah. You liked her more than I did last Dylan yeah, Galula, she's, she's amazing. She's amazing. And cute. Agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. Agreed. She's really good. She's like have you ever Yeah, she's really good. You know Meryl Streep. Just what it was like to have been very young. Particularly the days when you were in love for the first time, when you felt like a person sleepwalking and you didn't quite see the street that you were in and you didn't quite hear everything that was said to you. You're just a little bit crazy. So. 
Like that's the most captivating scene in the film. Mm-hmm. Right? She's the like, most captivating performance in the. In the I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, she so, was yeah, good. Uh, and I'd yeah, like to see her in more things. I would too. I would love to see Dylan in more things. Like she, she was easily. She had the best scene, and she mm-hmm. was the soul. Like I, her back is broken because without her, this carrying film this was movie. Just, like he's like, bro- the Lord. main actor, director, writer is trying to be that, but he's hamming it up too much. Like he's because mm-hmm. he's too he's too in the weeds here. He's doing too many things. He's the writer, director, and actor. He's For too probably producing in this. too. Yeah. Yeah, Probably. I think he even edited the film too. Like, uh, no, he definitely edited the film. It was him, him and somebody you know, else. Hands also, up on him. It's it's fairly well done. Uh, but I basically just like her and his roommates. Kind of funny. Yeah, his the scene he is basically has his full ego death call with his mother. He's like, "Mom, I can't, I can't call you anymore." I hated I have that. Hanging out with people, it was so bad. I was just like, "Oh." My that God, was the God, most God, Dawson's man. Creek thing. That was way more Dawson's Creek than Dawson's Creek ever was. Yeah. Um, the scene where where he's like he's at the the basketball. He's like, who you know at the party? He's like, oh, I know Jay. And he's like, I'm Jay. And then those two just like rip him up and kick him out of the party. And then it like kind of downfalls from there. Like there was this was the one funny scene, scene with that actor though was when he just starts cutting up the guy who's like kicking him out. He's like, so how oh. many hours, or minutes do you get playing on the basketball team? You know, probably not yeah. many. Sure. What's your short? What's your court and time? He, yeah, he just keeps cutting him up. Then he ends up running down the street, running away from him. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. But, uh, so basically, you know, Alex hooks up with Maggie, and then he does uh, what any fool, hardy fool does when they cook. Like, you know, they, he just messages her and becomes a little too overbearing. She tries to get some space, and then it turns into a kerfuffle. Um, and then one night she's like, getting rid of her turtle tank and he's walking back to his dorm after basically living his breakup arc, working out, making new friends. He sees her. She's like helping. Crying. And, you <laughs> crying know, crying. On a court. Yeah. Crying on a basketball court with some random stranger for some, for some random reason. Just some random guy plays ball. And then he's like, but he gives him a pat on the shoulder. And I was like, is this just like an analogy for his dead father? Is this what the scene was supposed to be? But it wasn't emphasized enough to like, like it, I would have bought that scene if he's playing ball and then like a snap shut and the guy's like just disappears and it's just him on the court, mm-hmm. you know, like that. And then it like he's like always oh, thinking about his dad or whatever. That would have been more poignant, but it just seems so random that it kind of pulled me out of the whole thing. Um, the stronger half of the movie is the latter half and the ending and mm-hmm. the whole like wrapping up of it and like how it took takes him two and a half years to make friends live his college life now he's got friends and and he they become boyfriend and girlfriend and you know they walk off and into the sunset and you know have have their you know their and then a roof up falls on them and they die yeah and then a roof falls on them and then they die yeah basically but yeah they they walk down the street and and, and that's that's the whole plot of shit house you know like they just setting aesthetic yeah the setting and aesthetic was was, um, it was it's an indie film yeah he did not have a lot of lights he worked with a lot of natural lighting and what few probably halogens he had um it's it's an indie film at at its heart um the budget for this film is not a lot you know and it's it's i mean it looks better than animal house yeah you know like considering the the like what limited budget he had it it was a, a better looking animal house like i said this this is a party film that's grounded more so in the reality of it. It's the reality of making friends, the reality of making relationships, running through the troubled waters of those relationships. And if people are mature enough to like reconcile and see past their own bullshit to actually be happy with each other. Um, it, it has those sort of important strings, but it does it in such a, you know, way that i just yeah, yeah exactly yeah like i can't Too quite find it yeah and i i oh. think I was, I was going in this movie thinking well, this could be an interesting indie maybe raunchous romp and it turned into just a self-indulgent uh 12 man piece because um as i'm about to it reminded me of dazed and confused but like a lot less good where like a lot of yeah. dazed and confused was pink obsessing about himself which is basically what this movie is 
um, yeah, but Days and Confused. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's. But it's this guy wanted to do his own Days and Confused. Is what it felt like. He's just like, I can, I can do a Days and Confused. I could be the next um, Link Letter, or Richard yeah. Link Letter. Yeah, yeah. It's basically. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. It's it's a weird. It, it's, it was an interesting film. It's definitely reminiscent of of L.A. culture. In the sense of that, just sort of self indulgentness of LA culture, um, it's it's definitely highlights the common struggles of a lot of modern kids these days in an annoying, cringy way. But a disconnect, like, a more disconnected world in a way where people are just online yeah. and they do less physical conversations, you know. Yeah. But uh, all right, well. Movie Morsels with Murphy. Yeah. I shit you not, I only have three movie morsels for this film. Um, it's about all I have waiting... patience for. for this that's, movie. that's all. Yeah, and we'll be under time too, so it's going to be great. While on their way to bury Pete the Turtle, Maggie, dealing with Jalula, mentions to Alex that she was a stage manager for his high school theater department and was always jealous of the actors. In the production of Our Town, the, the, that occurs at the end of the film, she plays the role of the stage manager, this time as an actor. So, you know, she was a stage manager, now she's an actor playing a stage manager. Um, Shithouse began as a 50 minute YouTube video shot over five days during spring break uh, at Occidental College in March 2018. Uh, performed by Cooper Rafe. Been better. Yeah, and I, you know what? You can tell, like, this movie, if it was 50 minutes, it probably would have been better, and there's a lot of stretching in between. But yeah, performed by Cooper Rafe and his then girlfriend, Madeline Hill, with Will Humans as camera operator. Rafe then tweeted a link to the video to filmmaker and actor Jay Duplis, who suggested using it as a basis for a feature-length film. Uh, Duplis expressed interest in directing the film, but was unable due to scheduling issues. Uh, Rafe dropped out of Occidental in early 2019 to devote more effort into making the film, which was shot over two weeks in Los Angeles in August 2019. For cost reasons, the production could not secure official clearance to shoot on Occidental's campuses, so principal photography took place without permits, with Rafe claiming he was making a student short with no money when asked. Um, and as a student film, it's quite good, but it... it, it yeah. I don't want to make this end extra rude but it reeks of a student film mm, yeah like this is this is a perfect example of a student film uh final note here the press notes provided by ifc reveal that rafe put together an early version of the movie with great friends and stolen equipment and in a burst of bravery tweeted the link to jay duplis while duplis helped get the project off the ground Rafe embraced the fortune favors the bold ethos of indie filmmaking by reaching out to the actress who eventually portrayed Maggie Dylan Galula on Instagram. Ironic because, you know, she's amazing. That was a key factor in the story. Um, we didn't have a casting director. So a lot of it was me texting friends. Hey, do you want to be in a movie I'm making? Rafe said for Maggie, I direct message Dylan on Instagram and mentioned the name of Jay Duplis about 15 times. After Dylan got on board, I begged her to direct message Logan Miller on Instagram. For mom, I begged Jay to ask Amy Landecker to read the script. And that's all I could find on Movie Morsels for this film because it's only like two years old. Uh, it came out, I think it was it was meant to come out at, at, during the film release. or It was meant to come out like on the indie circuit, but then Corona hit. So all of those plans got canceled and he eventually got bio by ifc film so cinematography was by rachel klein the film was edited by cooper rafe and autumn d music by jack kraus distributed by ifc films on october 16th 2020 the 99 minute film had a budget of fifteen thousand dollars with a box office gross of eighteen thousand three hundred seventy dollars so a small success for him he got his money back you know he made his budget back and he got an extra two thousand to buy himself a couple months to write another script. And he got um, featured on Hold Up, a movie podcast. Hold Up, a movie podcast. This is true. And you know what? Like, he wasn't terrible. 
He no, wasn't it's not a bad. This actor. Is, it's just not for me. Yeah, I honestly, I would it, like to see Cooper Rafe saying somebody things. else's words, doing other things, put him in some other projects. I'm just gonna I, say the opposite, maybe. Like maybe have him direct other people and have other people say his words, maybe. I don't know. I didn't think he was a terrible actor. I, I mean, I would be more interested in seeing a film that he directed without him acting in it, but I would also or be interested in what he would be like as a director under somebody else's, or as an actor under somebody yeah. else's direction. Because I, I don't think he was entirely terrible. Like He played. He wasn't bad. Before. No, he wasn't bad. Yeah. I, I, don't and I, I, I would like hard. to see him in something with, you know, a little more gravity or a little more, you know, budget or just Something with a little more meat to it, because like this was microwave. Yeah, there's just no for... meat. Yeah, it yeah, was it was, no a, it was a microwave it's meal, basic. if you will. Yeah, yeah, a bit too redundant or not redundant. It's just too too simplified. It's just too a bit amateurish in its yeah. in its themes, not just in, not so much even in its uh, direction or anything. It looks fine. Uh, rewatchability, I would not watch this again. I don't think I would watch it again. Um, there, yeah, there wasn't a lot to it that made me want to rewatch it. Like Dylan, it's too uh, long. Maggie, Movies that feel yeah. too long do not make me want to watch them again. And it's and and it's the shorter of the movies that we watched too. So like, it felt the longest. Yeah, I was pausing and like, how much time's left on this film? Many many times while watching it, and there was times was I wanted to tap like out. Happening. But I, yeah, House Party felt flew by, but this one dragged, and I. You know, I wanted to turn it off a couple of times, but the golden rule in our podcast yeah. is we don't turn off movies. We must watch them. That's it got better at the end, a little bit better near the end. So. Yeah, it did. It did. It landed on its feet pretty well. Like, like, like the last half was good, and except the, for that, when he calls his mom, the, the portion, too the much, portion, man, was too much. The portion between them first kind of banging and then ultimately banging, like their whole night. Yeah. There, mm-hmm. That was really done well, and the the ending, everything I mean, else hits whatever. him in the baseball. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it has rewatchability either. Does it hold up, or does it measure up? We'll say this is a new movie. Um, if it, if we're gonna ask, does it measure up to other party movies? Certainly not. It does not measure up to a, a house party. I don't think it even measures up to a lot of indie movies I've seen or coming-of-age movies I've seen. This one, there's good stuff here. This guy has some talent, or some talent for sure, and so do a lot of the actors in this. But no, this one does not measure up for me. Yeah. Um, I want to say it does, but in, in all honesty, it, it really doesn't. Like, I want to, because I, I wanted to go into this movie being like, okay, it's probably not that great, but hopefully it's better than what it is. And although it was the most real portrayal of yeah. current life, um, as a movie, as an entertaining movie, it doesn't really measure up. And party movies kind of need to be entertaining. Um, and at, at, at the end of this, it was the I Heart Huckabee of party movies because ultimately it was more it about really a party teenage movie. ego. Yeah, it was more about teenage ego death from both Alex and Maggie's characters. They had to overgrow their teenage bullshit to become adults, basically, and then pr- proceed with their journey of adultism. So, you know, I think it's, although it's not a great movie, it is a somewhat fitting movie to end on for this episode of parties uh, and hold up you know talk about parties i think it was a nice spectrum of what party movies could be Mm -hmm. it is because you know um it animal house is almost clownish they push the frat and party aspects too far where it doesn't feel believable at all uh as we said uh, house party's goldilocks it has like the perfect amount of everything Mm -hmm. Um, and then this pushes the other part. It's just like, let's do a, you know, a movie that's kind of, we go to parties and stuff, but it's just super serious and there's a lot of crying. And <laughs> yeah, just to, you could never put this up. Like I say about the perfect party movie, like House Party, you can put it on at a party. This, you could definitely not do that. Yeah, no, you definitely couldn't do that. You could get away with Animal House and House Party being on in the background of a, of a party, of party movies for sure. So, 
Yeah. So are parties movies rank movie rankings? I think we agree. House Party is the cream of the crop. We actually added it to our A movies. We finally got an A movie edition. First one since Soil and Green. Um, it's funny. So far, our werewolf episode had the most A's. That's why. Yeah. Mo- Who would have thought werewolf movies were the best of all movies? Right? But yeah, yeah. The, thing, the things you learn on this show. Yeah. I like so, the yeah, curve. I think we agree good. on our rankings here. Unless you like. Uh, Shit house better than Animal House. No, no, no. Shit house was definitely not better than. Yeah. I had more fun and entertainment watching Animal House as you should when watching yeah. a movie about parties. Shit house again yeah. was just ego death, and I, I, mm. I'm, I'm 36. I've been through that shit, man. I don't need to go and through self indulgence. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, um, no rip on Cooper Rafe. I'm like, I'm sure he's a nice no. guy, a talented. And I dude, think he's got a. Big career ahead of him for sure. Like this is it's, for a first it's little definitely gray. Yeah, it's it's definitely peak twenty twenties though. It's like peak twenty twenties. Like it's twenty twenty through and through. From I I relate to kid and play. <laughs> I relate to <laughs> kid and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. Um, I just want to be able to do that dance move where I grab my foot and then jump through it with the other foot. Yeah. 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 It's tricky. Uh, tricky. Meanwhile, you know, other uh, uh, people that are on TikTok are doing the Luddy. I don't know that one. Look, Murphy, we've got it in under two hours, and we all we really have to do now is launch the coming attractions. Coming attractions. Get the hell out of here. All right. Well, I was going to show you the Luddy, but I'll show you another time, maybe. Um, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Let's roll out with the coming attractions. We've got uh, we've got a new year coming in 2023 with a whole bunch of movies. We've got a a huge list with a bunch of guest stars that you guys are going to enjoy here on Hold Up. Uh, The next topic. Well, I guess. Should we? Well, yeah, the next topic we're, of movies we're going to get into is uh, presidents. Um, we're going to be no, politics. Talking, well, politics. Sorry, we're going to be talking politics while examining presidents and talking politics. That's that's going to be the the next episode. But before we get into the coming attractions, uh, right. we should probably you know talk we're... about our federation of podcasts here at United Federation Indeed. of Podcasts. Um, we got, we got uh, some hot KBBBL. Games. That's coming up uh, two days from now. Yeah, you guys are doing... Season. Moaning Lisa. The Moaning Lisa. Yeah. That's where we review The Simpsons and we laugh and we rejoice in how funny it is. So join us there. Uh, also check I out X-Men to the, the X-Men. Episode. Yeah, yeah. Also check... Well, his name's Bleeding Gums Murphy. Mm. <laughs> um, X- X-Men to the X-Men Anime Review Show. We took a week off, but we will be back this coming Tuesday with uh, the beginning of Sanctuary. That's going to be a good two-parter. Check out, oh, and my co-host Andres, check out, oh yeah, well, check out that interview we just had with Storm, Voice of Storm, Allison Celia Smith. Smith. Awesome. Uh, check out Graphic Histories podcast. Andre just interviewed Jeff Blythe, and that was a really good, wow. good interview. A lot of good stories. A cameraman who did The Shining, a lot of helicopter camera work. There's a lot of stuff yeah, for awesome. Disney and Circle Vision. That's good stuff. I'm going to check that one out. Yeah. Oh, check it out. Go check out his back catalog, too, everybody. A lot of good interviews on that show. Uh, Super made, including one with uh, me, myself, and I. Uh, you want to hear about how I almost killed Stan Lee? Go check out that out. Um, <laughs> Super Mater Brothers, check that out. They review re- re- reality shows. And I don't know what they got going on there right now. I think they might be done all the reality shows at the moment. Um, uh yeah they just they, finished up survivor uh i think they've probably got yeah. big brother coming up in the new year i know you guys just yeah. had the marvel mater super marvel yeah we did the mary mater marvel uh society over there that's true i'm sure i should have said that yeah. you know yeah. we talked about uh, all the mcu offerings of 2022 and then we had an award ceremony it was a lot of fun i put uh dave and jameel on the spot several times uh as i uh, as i like to do it was yeah, good. It was good. I had to skip the I had to skip the Black Panther bits. I haven't seen it yet, but it was a good episode. No, um, I, I popped in. I had you to say some it. words about Multiverse of Madness. You know, you did. Um, you it got heated. Murphy was very uh, animated about terrible. his distaste for terrible. Multiverse. Well, we all liked it better than Murphy did, and though he did bring our average down, we put his score in and it brought the whole thing down to like a five 
which it it's, it's still too high it's still too high <laughs> well we also have live long and podcast we have many divisions we have uh the command division where they review the shows we'll be doing the last episode of prodigy actually tomorrow night um we also have the ops division where we do the writer's room we did it once anyway but normally we do star trek radio theater we just did star trek yeah, 5 right. there's a pos yeah. episode coming up and also the science division we launch probes we we do trivia we we ask questions we 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 do debates lots of good stuff like that over in the science division we're we're trying to learn and then of course we have the low tutors of trek which is me and uh, Dave Puxley getting into the weeds on life and Star Trek and how they intersect, basically, is how I would describe the cuters of Trek. And we review comic books sometimes and play with toys to try to balance out the seriousness. But, we, you know, even our serious stuff gets pretty ridiculous and silly. And we play music for you, Star Trek themed often. And we also take out trivia debates. Uh, there was just a Christmas one, and the next one coming up is hosted by Jamil. And it will be on reality television. And also check out the Hellbound podcast. I believe an episode just went up. The last one. Uh, of the yeah, they, they're yeah the last one of the year. Uh, there's a, potentially a New Year's Eve surprise coming through. So right. you definitely want to tune well, in. Well, way to spoil podcast. the uh, surprise. Hey, they talk about it at the end of the episode. If you've watched, if listened, you would know. So. Oh, I did. I didn't listen to that episode yet. It just came out today. I was preparing for our little show here. All right. Well. Let's hit those coming attractions. Thanks for yeah, joining that's... us, everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming out and watching some movies with us. Um, <clears throat> apparently, losing my voice. Uh, it's it's always it was a good time talking parties. I'm hoping uh, 2023 mm. is going to be a great year of checking out movies. I hope we get more people to and celebrations. And join us on this wonderful adventure. Um, so yeah, uh, episode seven, we're talking politics. So get your hats in because here's what we're watching. Happy New Year. Watch House Happy Party. Happy New Year and enjoy the movies. I shouldn't tell you this, man, Drake, but you're a good officer and you have a right to know. It looks like we're in a shooting war. Oh, uh, hell. All the Russians involved, sir? Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies. I don't like the look of this, Fred. All right, tell you what you better do, old buddy. I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. And although I uh, hate to judge before all the facts are in, it's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. I, I first became aware of it, Mandrake, during the physical act of love. Huh. Missile still deflecting. Range one mile. <laughs> As 
that plane really got a chance of getting through? Well, uh, sir, uh, if the pilot's good, see? I mean, I mean, if he's really sharp, he can barrel that baby in so low. I mean, <laughs> you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight, you. A big plane, like a 52. Vroom! <laughs> it's jet exhaust, frying chickens in the barn. <laughs> Dr. Strange Love. Or, how I learned to stop worrying and... Love the bomb. A moving <laughs> picture. The president has asked me to convey to you that he's sending his energy bill to the floor with a call for a 10% reduction. The president's expecting our full support. Yes, he is. The Sydney. president's dreaming, AJ. The president Sydney has critically misjudged reality. If he honestly thinks that the environmental community is going to whistle a happy tune while rallying support around this pitifully lame mockery of environmental leadership, then your boss is the chief executive of Fantasyland. Good morning, Mr. President. How are you today? I couldn't be better. My apologies for the interruption. Mr. President, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. All evidence the contrary. What would happen if I called Sydney Wade and asked her to be my date at the state dinner on Thursday evening? <sighs> the president can't just go out on a date. I'm having dinner at the White House. I'm having lunch at the Kremlin. I don't know what happened. One minute I was calling him a mockery of an environmental leader. The next minute I had a date. She didn't say anything about me. Well, no, sir, but I can pass her a note before study hall. Would you like to dance? Yeah, I guess. I mean, yes, sir. I'd love to. Never mind that she is the hired gun of an ultra-liberal political action committee. And never mind that his 12-year-old daughter is sleeping down the hall. Lucy, are you okay with this? My having dinner with a lady? Dad, it's cool. Just go for it. and I'm running for president. In the past seven weeks, 59% of the country has begun to question your family values. This poll doesn't talk about my presidency. This poll talks about my life. I, I gotta nip this in the bud. This has catastrophe written all over it. Sydney, the man is the leader of the free world. He's brilliant, he's funny, he's an above average dancer. Isn't it possible our standards are just a tad high? Do you think there'll ever be a time when you can stand in a room with me and not think of me as the president? We here are highly resolved that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. We can't tell our people they can vote yes on abolishing slavery unless at the same time we can tell them that you're seeking a negotiated peace. It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. How many hundreds of thousands have died during your administration? Congress must never declare equal those whom God created unequal. Leave the Constitution alone. We are stepping out upon the world stage now with the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment now, now, now. Abraham Lincoln has asked us to work with him to accomplish the death of slavery. No one's ever been loved so much by the people. Don't waste that. This fight is for the United States of America. Do we choose to be born 
or we fit it to the times we're born into. Well, I don't know about myself. You may be. This settles the fate for all coming time. Not only of the millions now in bondage, but of unborn millions to come. Shall we stop this bleeding?